Hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, lecture number two on the continuation of discussions we had uh, on two port circuits. So last time we analyzed uh, this specific circuit that is here and basically in terms of analysis there was nothing new. We still went through the two-step process uh, and labeled the circuit, wrote equations for components on KCL and the only thing that was different was that we after writing all those equations we tried to manipulate the equations to turn them into a specific format and the format that we chose uh, for the first practice was to write voltages v1 uh, the voltage of port 1 and v2 voltage of the port 2 as a function of i1 and i2 the currents uh, of the port 1 and port 2 and if you do something like that then these numbers that get multiplied by the factors that get multiplied, the multipliers that get multiplied by the current and give you the voltage uh, has to have have to have a unit of uh, ohm and they were called uh, generally speaking uh, impedances and in the case of this circuit they're actually resistors but generally speaking these are impedances and then uh, we could rewrite the same equation in the, in the uh, matrix format which is what I'm going to do. So again, we wrote uh, V1 and V2 uh, in a vector, and we said the vector of V1, V2 could be write, uh, written as uh, a vector of currents I1 and I2 multiplied by a matrix of impedances that are Z11, right? Z11, Z12, Z21 and Z22. Now, uh, if you put these numbers here, Z11 was 10 ohm, Z12 was 7.5 ohm, Z21 was also 7.5 ohm, and finally Z22 ended up being 9.375 ohm. Um, so that's we, where we left the discussion. Uh, now, the same set of equations could be manipulated to write the two currents as a function of the voltage. It, and in that case, we said if you alternatively like, rewrite the same equations, and you can basically start with this set of equations and start manipulating them so that it gives you that uh, the currents as a function of voltage, then you can write them in the form of an I1 and I2, the currents of the two ports equal to a matrix of impedances, I'm sorry, admittances that are multiplied by the voltages V1 and V2. And then the values would be called Y11, uh, Y12, Y2, Y21, and Y22. Okay, so that said, um, the, the technique that we use, it was the generalized circuit analysis that we always discuss. In the book, it's, there are uh, alternative, there, uh, alternative uh, techniques discussed to calculate these values. And I'm going to uh, basically explain to you what those techniques are and whether or not uh, you're, but whether or not you're going to use them is completely up to you. And some cases, those techniques could actually end up uh, saving you time in terms of calculating these values. But like always, the universal technique that we use is general. You cannot use it for any problem. And um, the, because it's systematic, you will never need to... Uh, deviate from the same algorithm so what are those techniques that are discussed so it starts from uh, writing the equation the general equation uh, that you're looking for so we know that v1 is equal to z11 once you turn it into this format multiplied by i1 plus z12 multiplied by i2 and if you recall this the calculation that we did and all the uh, equations were uh, written for uh, 
the assumption that the port 1 and port 2 are connected to something and therefore not only there are voltages here but also there are currents. Uh, then V2 is equal to Z2 1 times I1 plus Z2 2 times I2. Now what you could do with these uh, is to start making assumptions and then define these impedances uh, uh, basically based on the assumptions that you make. What do I mean by that? Let's take this, uh, this first equation for example. If I assume that the current I2 is equal to zero, then this term is going to go away and then V11 at that point once I2 is equal to 0 is simply equal to V11 uh, equal to Z11 times I1 or in other words if you're looking for Z11 you take just the voltage uh, V1 and divide it by I1 and that gives you Z11 so let's do that if definition so Z11 could be defined as um, be defined as V1 divided by I1 when I2 is equal to 0 right again if I2 is equal to 0 that is going away and you can define Z11 as V1 divided by I1 so now based on the same uh, routine that we did you can now define say Z12. Z12 then is equal to V1 divided by I2 when I1 is equal to 0. So again if I1 is equal to 0 that term goes away and Z12 would be V1 divided by I2. And from this equation, I can define Z21 equal to V2 divided by I1 when I2 is equal to 0. And Z22, finally, is equal to V2 divided by I2 when I1 is equal to 0. Now, how do these definitions are going to help us? Uh, here's a practice that we can do. So let's take the same equation, the same circuit that is here, and this time we're not going to uh, go through the three step process and write all the equations and everything. And we're just going to take these definitions and see if we can quickly get these values um, or based on just this look uh, basically um, investigating this circuit okay so let's start with Z11 um, I need to know the ratio between the voltage by the current when the, the current I2 is equal to 0 so uh, when would the current I2 be 0 that would be when this circuit is not connected to anything right so I can basically recreate this circuit just completely remove that connection or just leave it like that but know that this is not connected to anything and then look at the voltage here divided by the current and that would be Z11 and if I do that is as soon as this port second port is not connected to anything it like a one port box and just dividing the voltage by the current from one port is basically the definition of the impedance or resistance of that box looking into that terminal right so in other words to calculate Z11 all I need to do is to make the assumption that uh, the this port is not connected to anything and then look from this port and calculate the equivalent resistance so what is the equivalent resistance looking into this assuming that it is not connected to anything well these two resistors at that point are in series to each other and then the result of that is in parallel to this one and that's the impedance in other words I can directly write Z11 as 20 ohm 
in parallel with a 5 ohm that is in series with 15 ohm and that would be 20 in parallel with 20 and as you may know that's 10 ohm so look at this this is the value that we just calculated without writing the general uh, equations but the result obviously is the same so we said z11 is 10 ohm that's the result of doing the algorithm and this is the result of using this definition directly is it simpler well yes it is simpler the good thing about uh, this technique is that it's going to give you the result quickly but the advantage of what we did here is that it's going to the general solution is going to give you all there is to know about that circuit it's not going to only give you z11 but by manipulating those equations you can get any of the un, uh, basically parameters that you would like to if you want y11 then you can get y11 and there are other parameters that we're going to discuss later that you can get those too when you choose a different set of uh, uh, the variables as your uh, vector here and a different set as the uh, basically you're going to choose a different set for input and output okay so let's now move on to the next simplest one to do which is z22 uh, using this technique so with z22 what uh, you need to do is to now take v2 the voltage of the port 2 divided by the current of port 2 at the time that the current of port 1 is equal to 0 which means when the port 1 is this time not connected to anything so basically what that says is that you're calculating the impedance or resistance of this port uh, simply when this is not connected to anything which is a relatively simple thing to do again so z22 is equal to it's a 25 ohm the two in series in parallel with 15 so it's a 15 ohm in parallel with a 5 and a 20 that are in series to each other which would be 25 times 15 over 40 and I think that's actually end up that should end up being equal to what we have already calculated okay so now we have z11 and z22 how about z12 and z21 okay now for z12 and z21 uh, the calculation is not as a straightforward but still uh, quite uh, manageable uh, so what we can do for those is to just again go back to this definition i'm looking for the voltage v1 divided by the current i2 uh, but this time the current I1 is actually equal to zero. So then again, the port one is not connected to anything. I'm looking from the port two, port two is connected, but the value, the ratio that I would like to calculate is this voltage divided by the current that is going in. And keep in mind this again, this port is not connected to anything. So uh, at that step, what I can do to simplify my calculation is to quickly um, redraw the circuit and then make an assumption for the current I2 that is going to simplify my calculation. Uh, what do I mean by that? I can assume I2 uh, is a constant 1 amp. In other words, connect uh, this port to a 1 amp source at that point. So let me quickly redraw that circuit here or actually uh, just add that source right there then I'm going to clear it later on so I'm going to take a source connect it here and say that's one amp a one amp source which means I2 at that point would be automatically equal to one amp now, if I2 is 1 amp and I'm try trying to calculate Z12, then if I calculate V1, that's basically my Z12. So um, I'm going to then say with this situation, uh, Z12 is basically my V1 uh, when 
i2 i1 is equal to 0 and i2 is equal to 1 so now uh, how is that uh, how, how can I calculate that well if I calculate this voltage right here v2 then v1 is basically a voltage divider now how do I calculate v2 I'll take this current multiplied by this resistance that would give me the voltage v2 and then use a voltage divider so the current is one amp the equivalent resistance we already calculated that that would be z22 that we already calculated and multiplied by one would be v2 and then a voltage divider between 20 and 25 so v2 is 9.375 times i2 which is one so it would be just 9.375 times a voltage divider between 20 and 25 so that would be 20 divided by 20 plus 5 I'm going to just say 20 plus 5 so 20 plus 5 so now if you do this calculation you can simply find out that that's equal to 7.5 and that's what we calculated for Z12 now for Z21 uh, exactly the same thing this time for port 1 in other words I'm looking for V2 over I1 when port 2 this time is open so let me remove this current source and move it to the other side uh, so I'm gonna remove this current source from here this time put my current source here on the other side in port 1 say so this is one amp and that's one amp and now again I'm looking for V2 divided by I1 which is just V2 and that would be this voltage V1 divided between 15 and the 5 ohms so take this uh, Z21 is equal to V2 when I2 is equal to 0 and I1 is 1 amp. So that would be the 1 amp current multiplied by equivalent resistance here, which was 10. We already know that. Uh, so that would be 10 divided between 15 and 5. So that would be 15 divided by 15 plus 5. And again, if you calculate this, you can clearly see that that's 7.5 ohm. Same results that we calculated from last time. So, is this any simpler? Well, if you know what you're doing and you know these tricks, voltage divider, equivalent resistances and all that, this this method would be a faster way of uh, making the you know, doing these calculations. Um, but I still would prefer if you know how to do the general three-step calculation because not only that's a guaranteed way of calculating all of these uh, but also it's uh, universal you don't have to memorize anything and you just bring those equations to any form that you want and um, you you have any parameter that you're asked to calculate not only the Z parameters any other parameters um, we're going to practice these more on different circuits, calculate different parameters and using different methods and hopefully by the time that you have to do a quiz or an exam you have a better uh, understanding of uh, how the processes should be done. Uh, thank you very much.